years and explore the future of real estate, looking at different alternative building technologies expected to change the construction landscape. Let me start with a highlight on the one thing we all agree when it comes to construction with the traditional brick and mortar. First, it's expensive. Secondly, time consuming. Thirdly, labor intensive. It's also considered environmentally unfriendly and the property is permanently located. Later on the accessory spot, catch a double dose highlight on creative and technical solutions ideal for a space. We come in, uh, review the space layouts, we, we go through each room with the client, understanding the users, their limitations, their age, the activity and also the lifestyle. Um, and now create space layouts and design that goes with with the client's requirements. On the home ownership front, we get inspired by those who dared to go the alternative route. Pegine to keep at a pesa to the Jagaigine Iwanja, Munaona Apa, Naona Technology in Missouri. Hi, and welcome to the property show. Join this conversation on our social media handles. Share your questions and comments. Let's get started. As always, there is something for everyone. Today, we look at different alternative building technology options available in the market. Let me start with what we all know, the traditional brick and mortar option. This method takes a longer time to build with certain steps that cannot be postponed or done faster. However, traditional brick and mortar system is durable and most resistant against floods and wind. It's also easy to maintain and if constructed properly, one enjoys its comfort for generations. Another technique changing the landscape has been adapted by Ololua Homes is compressed interlocking blocks of sifted soil, water, and a small percentage of cement. Here is more. Basically what we are doing here is uh, trying to provide affordable housing and by affordable housing, we are moving away from the conventional brick and mortar kind of building technology. We are making interlocking blocks, also using innovative ways to reduce on the time taken to construct and also the cost of building the units. This technology that we've come up with here is bringing affordable housing in the sense that we are reducing the cost. First of all, we are making the bricks ourselves and uh, we are using locally available material. And uh, in making the bricks, we are consuming not so much cement. So the cost of each brick is less than the conventional machine cut stone. Secondly, the fact that the stones are interlocking, these bricks are interlocking, uh, they have a more or less female end, male end. So that interlock, that's where the interlocking bit comes from. As you can see from this end, the other end, this is a male end, the other end is a female end. So they come joining each other like that. So in this case, we eliminate the need for mortar. And as we all know, cement is one of the factors that increases the cost of building. So we are eliminating that. And also sand. So 
this technology requires very little or no cement at all because mainly the only place where we're using mortar is at the foundation and also the first brick we're laying the first brick otherwise the rest of them just uh, fall in place as they interlock time is uh, of the essence when it comes to this kind of technology reason being in a day's work a fundi or whoever is in charge of construction each fundi is supposed to lay 500 blocks so uh, unlike the conventional method of brick and mortar this saves on time because you can well interlocking is faster than the conventional placing stones and then doing the mortar and also when you're doing the conventional method that has, is being done in other places once you go three courses you need to give the, the layers time to dry because of the mortar otherwise your building won't be very stable but in, in this case since there's no mortar there's no time needed for that to dry about the stability of the building it is even stronger than normal bricks because all the walls, you rock all the walls, they rock together and then you hold them with the lintel. I think if you look at this brick, this is nine inches and nine inches is a very bold brick. Although the height is not big but the stability of the wall is very good because it is nine like normal brick. So according to books, they say the building can last 150 years. Although I've not lived that long to know whether it can be true, yes. But I think according to the houses I've done already for the last eight years, they are still standing strong. The way you lock the brick, if you look at the brick, you can see there is a groove under the brick. And there is another groove on top of the brick. You can see there is another groove here. This is called male and there is a female on the other side of the brick. So what you do, you let the male and female come together. You have rocked that brick from behind. Again, if you can see the groove that is under, it is already rocked on the brick. So you come to the fore side of the brick. First you wipe the brick, you see, you make, it, you make sure it's very clean and then you lock again. You lock the male to female. You lock it from under, you lock it from up. Let me show you. This is the upper side. You lock it like this. So let me start from here. So you can see the brick is rocked from under, from top side, from the side to the side, that brick is very comfortable inside there. So I can lay like 500 bricks a day. So you can imagine how fast that construction can go. This is a three bedroom house and it can use like 3,500 bricks. So you can see if we are two fundis, we can lay like 1,000 bricks a day. That means in, in three days work, the building will be up for it. Technologies have adopted the use of interlocking precast concrete. Let's see more. This is actually what we call the German engineered uh, concrete wall panels. Uh, this technology has been in existence for the last hundreds of years. It was first made very popular uh, during the First and Second World War when the German army was building the bunkers, underground bunkers, reinforced bunkers. And thereafter, it has been commercialized and now it's in Kenya. This technology is basically uh, about uh, precast concrete, whereby we are using uh, environment-friendly raw materials, that is quarry dust, uh, cement, and, uh, and water and reinforced uh, wires. And this concrete is actually uh, produced under pressure and that is why we have these durable uh, wall panels. The first procedure is uh, you need to have uh, legally acquired land. Uh, we don't want to encourage Kenyans to build in rural reserves or riparian areas and in future you have trouble. 
So after you have the land, you need to get the required permits and government approvals from National Construction Authority, NEMA, and the county government. As you are aware, uh, housing is a devolved function. So you have to work with each particular county to get these approvals. Once you have the approvals, now you come to Bola Associates and we start the whole procedure of construction. The construction procedure is very simple. In fact, we are using the word KISS, which means keep it simple and safe. These panels are durable, very safe, and each panel comes at a, a height of 2.7 meters, which is the international standards, by 600 millimeters, by 23 millimeters. And after we do the actual measurements of uh, the particular house, be it uh, one bedrooms, two bedrooms, three bedrooms, we use special channels. Okay, these channels are to anchor the entire panels. And these panels are basically interlocking. It's a male and a female. And that is why, again, we are cutting down the cost of uh, construction management. We, there'll be no need of uh, cement or management in the site. The cost of setting uh, up, especially like the, this uh, particular house, which was actually, the design was given by National Construction Authority and the State Department of Housing. And we were given 42 square meters. And this basically, uh, in terms of background, was a government tender, which was floated in uh, March. Bola Associates participated, and I'm very proud and excited that we won uh, the first round of this uh, exhibition and the showcasing of the technology. In terms of uh, costs, there are three things in uh, affordable housing this country must get right. The first one is the quality. Quality is so critical. You cannot just talk about affordability without looking at the issue of quality assurance. That's what these uh, panels are giving. The second thing is the speed of construction. For us to get the affordable homes, we need to use the correct time to complete these projects. And then the last but not the least is now the cost to the actual owner of these houses. In terms of uh, our costing for this house, which was 42 uh, square meters, we did at 500,000 Kenya shillings. Uh, the whole business of affordable housing, we have to look at the cost of constructing per square meter. Currently, it is as high as 48,000 per square meter. And with our technology, to have a complete house, where I'll just give you the key, we are talking of around 30,000. Kenya shillings per square meter. That you can see has already crashed down the pricing. The other thing we are also doing uh, to cut down the cost is the issue of using the local raw materials. If you look at our housing uh, panels, there is nothing we are importing. So we need to think about also the issue of sustainability of these projects. And that is why as Bola Associates, we are introducing the concept of green technologies in our buildings. How are we green? The first concept about green, you can see the housing design. You actually might not need lighting. As you can see, our house is well lit. The second thing is the use of recycling. Recycling of water in this housing. We already have a technology from Germany where we'll be recycling water and we again bring the cost of owning those houses down. It's one thing to have a house and another to run that house sustainably. And to us, sustainability is as important as the actual purchase of that house. All of us are aware that the cost of kerosene has gone up, the cost of charcoal has gone up, it's almost becoming a contraband product. And we are saying as a country, we need to start thinking about green technologies and the use of solar, LPG gas, and water harvesting. Hydraform. Hydraform has been in existence for about 30 years now, um, operating with the original manufacturer of the Hydraform technology, that is the interlocking stabilized soil block machines. 
So we've been doing this now for over 30 years and distributing and selling around um, Africa, but also we sell globally. So the concept basically came from the old mud houses. Back in the days in Africa, most of us lived in mud houses. So that's what really the technology is about. But unfortunately, those houses used to collapse. That was because they didn't have any cement inside them. So what our MD and his partner did is really create a, a new technology to say, let's compress earth, take the soil, but mix it with 10% cement so that it becomes durable and strong. And that way the house doesn't collapse. And the main other reason was because housing is becoming very, very expensive, especially for continent. And a lot of people require housing. And this was a simple way to say, let's create something that will be simple and efficient, and that can be used by anyone to, to be trained and be skilled in building their own housing as well. Firstly, we are, we are accredited here with um, NCA. And then internationally, we are accredited with AGRIMA. These are the people who um, test all technology that's um, alternative building technology. So we've, been, we've had our, our licensing since 1996, so we are approved by them. Why we are safe as well is because we've gone through a lot of testing every year that we do with the, with the system. Another testing that I can speak about is the earthquake testing that we've done on this. So we built a structure which was tested by the VET University of um, Engineering Department in South Africa. The structure was put up to a seven Richter scale testing. The structure managed to stand. Obviously your windows um, still were shattered during that time, but the structure never collapsed. So in that way, it won't fall down on people. But another testing that we've done as well is ballistic testing to show that bullets can go through this, this wall. They've, we've had AK-47s shoot through here and they don't penetrate through. So it's quite a safe house that one can stay in. But also another advantage of it is that because the brick is made out of earth, the thermal properties of the, of the structure is very, is very good because when it's cold outside, inside becomes warm. And when it's hot outside, inside becomes cooler. If you choose to work with interlocking blocks, you don't need to use mortar, saving on cement and sand. The speed of construction is twice as fast. There is no limit on the courses put up in a day. Drastically reduced labor with the overall saving aspect of up to 30% because of time, labor and mortar. Next, the APS technology using foam sandwiched between galvanized steel and wire mesh. This technique does not need plastering, reducing labor, time and cost. Here is more from Koto. Why we uh, introduced the EPS system is uh, first and foremost, if you look at the conventional of building, you find that uh, the buildings are rather heavy, right? And uh, you've seen on news clips and stuff like that how buildings collapse because of the, the amount of weight, right? So by using the Koto system of building, we have made the load lighter and you can do your building at a very faster rate compared to how it was done the old days. That's a brick and mortar. So like, for instance, let's take this for example. If you are to build a house using brick and mortar, by the time you lay your one, two, three, four, five stones, I come with my panel. It's 1.2 meters by 1.2 meters. I lay it down. I finished the, the distance of 900, which is standard window level. So. If you look at my solution in which I am building with, it is much faster than the conventional way. And if you have a series of columns running throughout your structure, your structure is strong and sound compared to the brick and mortar where, if you've not noticed, if you are to remove just one stone from a wall, you can bring down that wall in a couple of minutes. Where here you have a series of columns that go throughout the entire building, which means you have a very solid structure the time that it takes to build actually a, a building such with the Koto system, it actually cuts your time by 
For instance, let's look at this bed sitter that we're in right now. It took us 10 days from foundation to completion, as you can see with all the finishes and fittings. If I was to do a three bedroom house, it would take between 30 to 45 days, and I'm done. If I was to do a story building, a, a maisonette, we're looking between 8 to 12 weeks, and I'm done. That's including the finishes. You see, if you were to build a conventional house, right? First and foremost, let's talk about the brick and mortar. You need guys to come and chisel eh, the stone. You need a guy who's going to come and, and, and lay the bricks one by one. So if you look at the, the labor intensity, compare the conventional building and the cotton of building, you find that my one panel can be lifted by one person, right? And it comes already pre-coated on both sides, which means I have a simpler finish. I'm not going to have to come and lay my brick, then come and plaster, then come and rinse with water, let it dry. And so I've cut out a lot of, you know, um, processes in building to make it simpler, faster and easier. Get accurate corners, get a nice smooth finish. That is really hard, it's usually hard to achieve if you're building a conventional way, which means you'll need more people when doing your conventional building than I would doing my call to house and I'll still finish twice the speed faster than you would doing the conventional building. are the three main things that make up a successful project and Tyroform Solution has locked this down. Here is more. Ecobrim Builders, this is a new technology of actually building affordable houses. The timeline to construct is very uh, manageable. Uh, one week you have your own house. Usually this is a house that actually controls the heat. When outside is hot, the inside is cool. So there's no need of fans and uh, ACs that on the house. The house is durable for the duration of around 30 years. You enjoy the house. We can also have the facility whereby if you want to relocate it, we use it as a permanent or semi-permanent house. We can be able to relocate it at just a minimal cost. We use a new technology of styrofoam. The styrofoam, this is a material that is used uh, to control the heat outside and inside. And uh, it's also very durable. This material now we are making by ourselves. It's available in Borokari. Uh, we can be able to supply to every customer needs who now need this house within the duration of one week. We make the style of homes and erect the house. convenient would it be to move into your portable dream home in just 14 days? Well, all this is possible using the container home concept. Here is more. This housing trend has taken root in the Kenyan market. Among the things that have made this housing option stand out are strength and durability, saves on labor, availability, they are eco-friendly, and they can be built extremely fast. Our final option on the alternative building technology available in the market is the energy efficient log homes concept. Let's see a contemporary development with a traditional twist. Some frequently asked questions involving use of logs, a new concept in building include 
durability. Many would wonder the lifespan of log homes and their permanency survival in a tropicalized country like ours. Log homes have survived up to 150 years in the European countries. Obviously, like all normal homes, one must take care and maintenance is always essential in keeping your home to an acceptable standard. Cost of insurance. Insuring a log home is just like insuring any other ordinary house. By installing sprinklers, fire sensors and alarms, fire extinguishers and all other measures safeguarding a house against perils that can befall any other property, you substantially reduce the premiums to be paid in insuring a log home. The real estate landscape has evolved worldwide with countries recording successful affordable housing projects using alternative building technologies. It's time we warm up to the changes. If you're looking for quality, speedy and affordable projects, these are options worth considering. Just drop us a line and we'll be happy to connect you with the right partners. Next, property news. Last week, we joined a breakfast forum on an interesting topic on how resident associations can interconnect and transform communities. Let's hear more. From a resident association, um, our key challenges, simple stuff like land change. That's a very simple ask. Why not start with the people give us service? The sub-county approves all land changes. Let them start using blockchains. And then we as residents validate that indeed, uh, my neighbor here is not building a four bedroom apartment in a zone that's 0 0.5 acres. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a big challenge. Yeah. The next is county services. Uh, we have street lights and um, within Gara, we have a WhatsApp group. We have got Kenya Power Managers there, Nairobi Water Regional Managers there. And we are constantly talking, not arguing, engaging, telling them there's a water burst on Kigwa Road. And the team will come and sort it out. But what we're seeing is that the issue is the infrastructure was built in the 70s. So we've, we've got a cultural issue in terms of maintenance and management of resources in this country. So when we bring in new technology, yet we're not solving the basics. Like for instance, having an operations repairs and maintenance of all public infrastructure is a problem. We have disjointed development. Uh, within Gara, we border uh, Kasarani and the rest downstream. When we, we started complaining about water leakages because we felt that there's a child somewhere in Zimmerman who will not get water because I who live in Ridgeways has water, but I'm seeing a burst. So there's that, uh, that drive to make a difference. And right now, the community is saying everything counts. All resources count. We wanted to put blockchain in the Ministry of Land so that land transfer can be done in an hour and uh, it can follow certain rules. Remember I said consensus. If we said no flat here, the transfer cannot be affected. The people who went to court are lawyers. We are still in court. Government cannot move because um, the smart contracts were going to mess up with the revenues with the, the payments that lawyers get. Yes, that's why I'm saying that uh, the, the consensus, everybody who signs that there is no, they can't put up a flat where there are a single resident, he has signed the contract. So it's enforceable in court. That's why I talked about consensus, uh, smart contracts, permissions. Um, when did we permission you to do this? Um, these are the principles which, which Kamasha was asking. 
um, once we once we are in that blockchain, nobody would now begin to say I'm putting flats here because they, they were signatories to that smart contract. But on infrastructure, as I said, we are going to try something like garbage collection um, where we give tokens and people would fight to do that. Even infrastructure, we could do some of that. You've already seen even um, desperate young people without jobs, you find them around potholes trying to fill it so that you pay them. If we gave incentives uh, like tokens that you do this, you get these tokens, you can go to a bank in Roslyn to redeem those points. Everybody will take care of, of the road. Um, even the water, we can begin to do that way. The problem we have is that everybody says government, 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 um, the residents themselves um, in most countries, and I've lived in several countries, they are the ones who take the initiative. And then now you can negotiate with the county and say you don't even come for water, uh, we can't pay for this uh, because you, you are not doing it. Ambulances, the same thing. to invest in quality and aspirational real estate developments that encourage great community living? Join Cyton Investments on Saturday, 27th October for their open day at the Ridge. This luxurious and contemporary development comprises of one, two, and three bedroom apartments located in Ridgeways, Nairobi, approximately 10 kilometers from the CBD, just 300 meters from the junction of Kiambu Road and the Northern Bypass. up after the break, a double dose on creative and technical solutions ideal for a space. A turnkey project, just as the word uh, says, is when a client gets into a space and turns the key and it's ready for use. An inspiring story on those who dared to go the alternative route. Jego una beya ju sana tu kianza kwanza ngu jega na hi. And much, much more. Don't go away, we'll be right back after the break. Welcome back. You're watching the property show. It's that time for the accessory spot, inspiring home ownership stories from those who dared to go the alternative route and their property gallery with investment options available in the market. Next, the accessory spot. When do you engage an interior designer? Is it when conceptualizing your dream home or after engaging an architect? Let's get these insights from a professional. Interperspective Studio is a design and uh, fit out company. So we specialize in turnkey projects interior projects whereby we do the uh, interior design right from space planning into creating interior architectural drawings and um, doing the fit out which is basically the construction of the space and then finally uh, doing the final touches which is uh, furnishing and decor. 
A turnkey project, just as the word uh, says, is when a client gets into a space and turns the key and it's ready for use. So the reason why we do turnkey projects is we realize we get called to offices where contractors have done the office fit out and they did not think about the decor uh, aspect of the space which creates interior interest or visual interest and so we wanted to provide the whole package to lessen the burden on our clients and also to be able to you know just do a space that is ready for use so for a residential uh, space interior design and construction comes in in two ways the client would either contract us at the point when the architect is doing the layout so that we can have a second opinion on just how the circulation of the space is and how the arrangement of the furniture can be done so that by the time the building is up we are not knocking down any walls but i think in our culture and um, in our country, many, many of our clients call us at the point when the architect has left the, the space and uh, the contractor also is wrapping up. So basically at that point, we come in, uh, review the space layouts, we, we go through each room with the client, understanding the users, their limitations, their age, the activity and also the lifestyle. Um, and now create space layouts and design that goes with, with the client's requirements. So after that point, we go into creating the vision behind the design, whereby um, the client has expressed their aesthetics needs. And so we try and translate that and produce either 3D renders, which is just a visual representation of how the spaces would look like, or we'll do a concept board, or otherwise known as a mood board, which is just bringing different uh, pictures that um, kind of communicate what the client is looking for, uh, and also showing them the samples. So upon approval, uh, we go into now constructing. So we'll do the tile work or the floor works, we'll do the, the wall uh, paint or whatever wall, wall finishes we need to do, the ceiling, the staircase, everything that pertains an interior space, including even selecting fixtures uh, for plumbing and whatnot. So to the detail, so that's what we'll do. This is one of the projects we undertook last year and uh, we are currently standing in the reception area. So for this particular project, this place, it was a bare hall and nothing was done. So we came in, went through with the client on their requirements and then did the design, did the fit out, entire construction process, and then also did the decorating, which included um, graphic artworks, which you'll be seeing as we go on. So here we have the informal meeting room. Um, basically this is where uh, guests sit when they're about to see one of the guys in the office. Um, at this point, we worked with a very minimalist approach in the interior and then worked a lot with the colors of the client, which is um, black and white, and we broke it with uh, red, which you'll see in the rest of the office. This is the support office. This is basically where I guess they talk to clients about their domains, about their websites. And you um, can see there's some graphics on the wall. Well, because it's an IT company, we really wanted people to interact with the space. So um, make it a bit more fun and lively than just having bare walls or simple wallpaper. We are big on saving the environment as well. And so over here we have a saying um, that basically helps guys realize that they need to save paper. And here at the printing area, there's also another saying. And this is an interesting way of making guys interact with the functions of the office. So 
this is basically the open office that uh, sits about 30 people and on this wall which we call the wall of fame this is basically um, leaders in the IT industry and what we have above there is um, the leader in this particular company and so that there is um, an encouragement to the workers here that they can be on the wall of fame. This is the CEO's office. The brief in this office was very clear. Um, he wanted to have a theme surrounding horses and guns. Uh, so he, he does a lot of horse riding. So we came up with this digital art and then um, got some horse structures as part of the decor and um, an old map. If you can see the, the coffee table. So we imported this map and basically it was all about horses and guns right to the washroom which we're going to next. So this is the bathroom, again going with the whole horse uh, theme. We used, these are actual horse shoes as part of the frame and we got also old gun photos and a horse head hook. So basically for this, uh, for the CEO's office we had a theme that we had to uh, adhere to. This is a breakout area, this is the fan space where when guys are tired of working inside they can work outside. Um, you can also have a nap as well have your lunch here. This is the smoking zone so because um, you can't smoke in the, in the office so we just created an extension of the breakout area. So here we have the kitchen a wet kitchen. Uh, the space and the requirements of the clients allowed for such a spacious kitchen and um, we have a sitting area here and again because it's an IT company and there's a lot of interaction and a lot of creativity uh, we came up with this uh, wall that has graphics with IT jokes and a menu that is related to the IT industry. If you're looking to define your functional spaces, just give us a call and we'll connect you to the right professionals. Let's get inspired by those who dare to go the alternative route. In Uba, Ijakasana, <laughs> Pegine to keep at a pesa to the Jega Igine e Wanja, Munaona Upper, e to keep at a pesa. Now on a technology in Missouri. Interlocking stabilized soil block is kind of whereby when doing the construction, you don't use mortar when laying the blocks. Once the blocks have been made from the machine, you just lay them. Initially, uh, the owner, the client, intended to make it to be a maisonette for him to reside in, right? But as time, as time went by, he felt nice to make it commercial. That's why it was subdivided and made into um, an apartment comprising of four families. I get this question all the time. 
Why should you share your story on this segment? It's to inspire, inform aspiring home buyers the bumps to avoid along the way. Next, the property gallery with traditional brick and mortar projects available in prime locations. This comprehensive residential project consists of one, two and three bedroom apartments with high quality finishes within nine blocks. Accommodation features include a well-designed spacious wooden floor living area, the dining area offers an airy space, the open plan kitchen is fully fitted with spacious upper and lower cabinets sufficient for storage, Dolby area, fully functional for laundry. The master bedroom is en suite, the second and third bedroom share a common, well laid out bathroom space. Rosewood Estate consists of three bedrooms, all ensuite bungalows with a plinth area of 148 square meters. This project is set in a leafy, serene suburb away from the hustle and bustle of the city, as well as designed with modern day utilities that perfectly fit family needs. The amenities include an entry porch, spacious lounge area, an open plan kitchen which is conjoined to the dining room, a spacious pantry where you can keep your kitchen supplies, three bedrooms all en suite, built-in wardrobes providing sufficient space, separate laundry area, common cloakroom where visitors can freshen up at their own privacy. The house design has incorporated terracotta tones, classic lines and selected finishes including ceramic tile floors, painted or wallpapered walls, fitted cabinetry and quality sanitary wear that ensures each home is perfect for its occupants. I must say, being able to design at first glance if a home is worth investing takes a keen eye. At First Avenue, we provide at a glance tips on determining if a property is a good deal. Just visit our offices and we'll hold your hand every step of the way. Thank you for watching The Property Show. It's a fact. For decades, construction has been dominated by traditional brick and mortar system. That has now changed. If you're looking to build your dream home, multiple units or commercial spaces, there are many construction options available in the market, offering quality, speed and cost-efficient techniques. For today next week get an in-depth view of this luxurious duplex in the lavington neighborhood share your thoughts and comments on our social media handles as always there is something for everyone kwaheri Oh,